Hi, my name is Rick. Um, like a lot of people, my wife and I watch a lot of home improvement shows, and of course there was an episode on there where people had wooden spindles on their staircases, and they changed them over to iron. And my wife asked, would that be hard to do? And I said, no, I don't think so. I'm in the construction, but not this type of construction. So I thought I'd give it a shot. So I've come across some things that were easy and some things that were hard. And I thought I'd make a video to try to show people maybe some tips and uh, how to make it a little easier. One of the things is a lot of times they make it look so easy with the way the spindles pop out. And they just pop the new one in and they keep right on going. But if you want to keep your ornaments in the same center as all the other ones as you're going up the riser then there's a little more involved so this is the easiest way to do it now this has been shown all over the internet you take the smallest portion of the baluster the wooden baluster and you take a sawzall or you take a um, a regular hacksaw you take it right here and Once you cut through, these should just twist right out. And usually they'll have what they call a brad nail in there, but if you twist it, it'll pop right out of there, and then the top part of the spindle will pull right out. Like that, exposing the hole. Now on the bottom, a lot of the videos that are on the internet, they show holes already drilled in here, which I thought I had. That's the part that changes a little bit, because once you pop this off, you're going to notice there is no hole. So how do you go ahead and get this in here? What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to drill your own hole. So to do that, you've got to get what's called a paddle bit. And you're going to have to lay out the center of this to the center of your hole up top. Mm -hmm. So you'll put a level here. And once you put the level there, you'll get your center here. Then you'll go ahead and drill in there with a paddle bit. And uh, what we'll do is we'll stop the video and go ahead and we'll pull out the rest of these balusters, wooden balusters. I'll go ahead and then uh, I'll grab my uh, level and I'll show you how to do that. All right, now we're on to uh, laying out the plumb on the uh, spindles. Um, I showed you before that there's no holes here after we took the, uh, the wooden um, spindles out of here. So now what we've got to do is we've got to plumb the top hole down to the bottom part of the uh, spindle and we're gonna have to do a hole. So for example we went ahead and laid these out but just to show you take uh, this is a four foot level you can use a two foot level you're gonna go to the center of the top hole here and you're gonna go down to the bottom hole and what you do is once you get your plumb you're gonna go ahead and mark that then you've got to measure your distance from here to here and half of that will be where your hole is. Once they're laid out, this seems like the best way that we've found that we can uh, go ahead and, and get our hole done. This is called a paddle bit or sometimes they call them a, a spade bit. I've gone three quarters so you got a little bit of play and you can go ahead and get your, uh, your spindles in. What you do is you start out straight in like this. Get that hole sort of scribed out, and then start bringing your drill up so that you're on the vertical. Go straight in on the vertical. You want to be about maybe a quarter inch to a half inch below this point right here, so that your your spindle won't pop out. down a little bit further. Now that creates, if you look in there, that'll create a little landing in there so that it won't come out. Then you'll go ahead and we'll go to the next phase where we're going to measure them and we're going to cut them. Do you have to go the other way? All right, now on this stage here, everybody on the internet tells you to measure from the bottom plate here to the top of your railing. So when you go ahead to cut your spindles, for example, this measurement is 
31 and a half, which gives you 15 and a quarter to the center of your design. So that's what you want to do. You want to make sure your design keeps right on going up through the center. Now, what you got to account for in the railing itself up top of here, it goes in almost two inches that hole. So what you have to do is you slide up and then it pops back down into your hole on the bottom here. So for example, when I take our next twist, if you try to jam it in like they show you on the internet and then go ahead and cut it here, it kind of throws you off a little bit. So what I've found seems to work is you can go ahead and put your, your spindle on the outside here and go up almost to the top of the railing and mark it down here on the bottom. That way, if, now you want to mark it like almost center of this plate here because this, this plate here is roughly almost an inch. So that gives you about a half inch of play. But that'll give it to you It'll make it a little bit longer than it will shorter. You don't want to come up shorter because if you've ordered exact amounts, which I recommend getting a couple extra just in case. But so far we've been fortunate it's okay. But what I'll show you is the thickness of the depth, the depth of this hole, in other words, goes in about that much. So that's the amount of play you have. So when you push it up, it's going to drop back down in your hole there. So now that we've got that, if you want to go ahead and do the traditional way that other people show you, you know, when you go ahead and take your measurement, then make sure you add the distance here. When you take your, your measurement here, you're going to measure from the top down so that you're going to make sure that you have that inch and a quarter, inch and three quarter that you want to add to the top of your measurement so that it'll go up and drop back down. If you do it the way I did it, where you go past it, up into your rail, and then mark the center of your plate here, it's coming out pretty darn close. You may have to make one cut or two cuts depending on what you want. And we'll go to the next phase where we're going to go ahead and cut it. Okay, here's the part that we're going to go ahead and measure up the end of the spindle. Here's the long end here that goes up in the top of the hole. You can either keep that if you want to try to keep your, your pattern in the center sometimes depending on your stairs. You may have to cut the top of here or cut the bottom. But so far we've been fortunate where we're only working from the bottom as long as we've got that space where it goes in the top of the, the rail, the handrail. When you go ahead and take your measurement, you want to make sure that you keep that in mind, that it goes up in there. So, like I said, I've already accounted for it because when I lay it to the side of the handrail, I know that my measurement's already good. So when I mark it, I've already taken that into consideration. If you haven't taken that into consideration, when you've taken your measurement from the bottom of your handrail down to the bottom of that plate where the foot goes then you've got to make sure that you add this different difference here that goes inside you don't want the full amount that goes inside because you want to have that play where it's going to drop back down so now that you've got that already measured out go ahead and take your sawzall this is what I'm using I'm using just a regular battery operated sawzall you can actually use a hacksaw if you want to I have when the battery went dead or I've also got a cutoff grinder if you need that. So good. Line your saws all up. And that's that part. Now we'll go ahead and we'll install it. Okay, here we have our piece that we just cut. Now these are called shoes. You can even get these on the top if you want to. They'll go like this. We opted not to get them because sometimes when you were trying to work with the top, if it doesn't sit perfect, then you're going to have to silicone it all the way around and it's a mess. And this, this looks more like a clean design to me. And then these are designed what they're called for. They're called shoes. They go right on the bottom. So you take your shoe, you slide it right on there like that. And we did our measurement right. It slides straight up. You'll hear it stop and then drop right into the hole. And there you go. And you got a nice clean fit. If that worked out right, this should be... Our measurement of 16 right to the center, and that's what we've been getting. So 16 to the bottom, it's right there, that's the center of our, our twist. And then you just continue right on up the rest of the way up, and uh, that's how we've been doing it. Now we'll come back later on. You can either use construction adhesive. I've heard some people go ahead and use um, 
uh, glue, um, regular with a glue gun. We're actually going to use this uh, silicone. I got a black silicone that sets up um, like an epoxy, and then that'll go right in there and it'll match the uh, the spindle up in here, so you won't see it. And you won't have to caulk around it. We'll fill that up and we'll put the shoe back over with a little bit of a uh, epoxy or glue, and then they have a set screw right here that will just lock it in. Now keep in mind, all this is is for uh, decoration aesthetics. It's going to cover up the hole that you made. Now you'll see right here where the old spindle was. All you got to do is sand that down. We're going to go ahead and, and prep these and uh, go ahead and put um, paint right back on there before we go ahead and, and silicone all these in. So what I would suggest is that you go ahead and you dry fit all of these before you go ahead and, and lock them in and silicone them or construction adhesive, whatever you want. So that's that's that. All right, and one more tip, and hopefully this will be it. Um, this is probably going to take us approximately two days, maybe three, two and a half days, three, something like that, to go ahead and do the finishing and uh, epoxy them in. Uh, another tip I figured out was on the front of these, which I'll show the before and after once we're done, um, what we started with uh, with the wood balusters. You'll notice here that there's a little hole here. Now, what they did when they went ahead and they made these up was they made a real deep hole, actually deeper than we needed. And what would happen is if we dropped it down in there, it took our pattern and it made it lower. And it, you know, it wouldn't work with the spindle, baluster, whatever you want to call them. So what we did was we took the old spindle, baluster from the original install and we cut down a little chunk of this out like about maybe three quarters of an inch and we made our own plug and drove that in there so now that you've got like a three inch or three eighths a uh, little hole instead of what you had was almost an inch and then it wouldn't work out so that'll slide right back up in there and then that drops right into the hole there and then you'll get a shoe. These are actually going to get square shoes. This is a square shoe here. And that will get epoxied in there. And then the square shoe will go down like that. And you won't see anything. So there's not too much prep you have to do down here. These shoes should probably go ahead and, and cover over where the old uh, baluster spindle was. And you're good to go. And then that'll make these nice and strong once they get in and uh, siliconed in or uh, adhesive in. So thanks a lot for watching. Uh, I hope that helps. Um, go ahead and make some remarks if you want on my channel. Um, if you got any questions, maybe I can help you out a little bit. But uh, those are some tips, and I hope that makes it a little bit easier with going ahead and putting your own uh, iron balusters in. Thanks a lot.